On this week's XJ Talk Show, Jeep is in hot water. The NHTSA is about ready to spank FCA on the bottom for not fixing their recalls in time. And FCA Australia has lost a whole bunch of Jeeps, nearly $8 million worth. Steve's got a couple of quick Jeep tips for us. We spread some of that YouTube love. There's voicemails, reviews, and even something from the mind of Nikki G. Oh, and we'll find out what's happening on XJTalk.com. Jeep Mama talks about the do's and don'ts of crossing deep water in your Jeep and what might be happening with the four low on her JK. I cover a couple of nasty surprises I found while working on my Jeep. All that and more on the next XJ Talk Show. You're listening to a 4x4 four by four, four by four Radio Network Podcast. Are you ready? It's the XJ Talk Show. With Tammy on Wrangler. Tony and Josh on Cherokee. So sit back. Strap in. And First week in Jeep. Well, Jeep is in some hot water. Well, unfortunately, this is not a story of a topless Wrangler in a hot tub time machine. No, unfortunately, U.S. auto safety regulators have tentatively concluded that Fiat Chrysler Automobiles Nevada did not adequately remedy safety defects in a timely manner. They nor did they notify car owners of recalls or keep federal officials informed about ongoing issues according to an official document seen by Reuters on Wednesday. In other words, they're almost ready to spank FCA hard on the bottom for being a bad boy. The document, in in an official draft of a notice to be published in the Federal Register, contains the most strongly worded language to date by regulators at the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and expands from 20 to 22 to the number of recalls that the NHTSA intends to scrutinize at a public hearing on July 2nd. The automaker could face more than $700 million in fines and be required to, check this out guys, buy back or replace vehicles if regulars find that they failed in their legal recall obligations. That means those ZJs that were included in there in that recall eh, might, might get bought back. Who knows? All told, the recalls involve more than 11 million cars and trucks, including 1.5 million Jeep Liberty and Jeep Grand Cherokees, uh, recalled in June 2013 to reduce the risk of fire and rearing collisions. At this time, a year and a half after the recall notices were filed, NHTSA said FCA has left many of the vehicles unrepaired. The number of completed repairs are, hovers right around 320,000 of the 1.5 million vehicles recalled, or around 21%. That ain't good enough. The notice said NHTSA found that FCA failed to notify owners about defects in two previously unreported cases. The public hearing and an accompanying special order issued to the automaker on May 18th are part of an escalating regulatory battle between FCA and the Obama administration. FCA said it would, of course, cooperate, but added in a June 4th response to NHTSA's special order that it saw no reason to hold a public hearing. Now, now, people, move along. Nothing to see here. Yeah, they're trying to cover it up or something. Who knows? Anyways, I'll keep you guys surprised as to what happens with all that. Now, here's one straight out of the amusement park lost and found. Look, it's easy to lose a car in a big parking lot, especially if you've been away from it for a good period of time. We've all done it, right? Or maybe it's that tool you just had in your hand seven seconds ago, and now it might as well be in the Bermuda Triangle. But what if that parking lot or paranormal tool-eating garage floor is the size of Australia? Well, according to Sydney's Daily Telegraph, Fiat Chrysler Automobiles Australia is trying to locate, quote, hundreds of vehicles, mostly Jeeps, that two former high-flying CEOs lent to celebrities. The newspaper valued the missing vehicles at about 10 million Australian, or around 7.75 million U.S. The vehicles were lent to actors, models, sport figures, and TV personalities, but definitely not to Jeep podcast hosts internationally. No. This mass loaning of vehicles was all to raise awareness of the company's brands in the country. The trouble is, FCA has sued the two former FCA Australia CEOs, Clyde Campbell and Veronica Johns, over allegations they misappropriated company funds, and it wants to know what happened to those vehicles. Do the company's investigators know if they simply hit the lock button uh, on that key fob twice, the horn's going to beep? Come on, people. It's easy to find these things. Now, funny story nonetheless, but I bet more than half those rigs are long gone and uh, will likely never be recovered. 
Hey, big thanks to all of you guys out there who every week send in a bunch of stuff for This Week in Jeep. I can't get to them all. Got to sift them through them. But uh, keep sending them. I really appreciate the help. If you guys have a story you think we should be reporting on or if you got a response to any one of our stories, please send an email to newstips at actuallytalkshow.com. Hey, that's a great place to be, isn't it, Josh? I mean, remember the uh, the old days when we were begging and pleading and having to do the work ourselves to to find the uh, the Jeep tip stories, uh, to actually have a lot to go through? That's wonderful. Love the... Uh, the audience love, the, our field, love our field reporters. Yeah, the, I was going to say audience participation, but yeah, field reporters, I, I like that better. So <laughs> uh, tip of the hat to you guys. Thank you very much for, for sending those things in. We, we really, really do appreciate it. XJTalk.com is where you go when you're not off-road. And now you can go to XJTalk.com when you're off-road too. Using your smartphone, install the Tap a Talk app, then search for XJ Talk. Take XJ Talk with you wherever you go. Jury duty, dinner with your spouse's parents, even, well, anywhere you need your XJ Talk fix. You already know about XJ Talk on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. But did you know we're on YouTube as well? We have often on-road adventures, how-tos for fixing or augmenting your Jeep. Besides, man cannot live by sound alone, right? Come see what we got at youtube.com slash user slash xjtalk. Don't forget to subscribe and make comments on our videos. xjtalk.com. It's where you go when you're not off-road. Tonight on Wrangler Talk, being prepared while off-roading, but I'll need your help. Uh-oh. <laughs> Lots of help. <laughs> so nobody had the wave down. Five, I was yeah, waving when they said my name. Seems completely normal. Three, three or five seconds after the music starts. <laughs> uh, oh, but anyway, it's all right. It's, uh, it's kind of funny. The, uh, a whole drinking game could start up over the, uh, oh, will absolutely. they wave in synchronization or not? You got, you got to chug until Josh waves. <laughs> there, that's, the, uh, that's the game right there. So you guys know me as Motoroy, Tony here on the show uh, over at xjtalk.com, uh, Motoroy and uh, Wrangler Talk and uh, xjtalkshow.com. So uh, we're here to uh, inform and entertain. Uh, I, I just stole Josh's inform. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we, uh, we have a little fun here on the show where none of us are pro- professionals. Uh, Josh and I used to say we were just a couple of knuckleheads. And uh, then Tammy joined and uh, our... Uh, Three knuckleheads. No, no. We, no, two knuckleheads and a blonde. <laughs> we can't... Uh, oh, I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that actually fits. <laughs> Because that's not that's kind of a derogatory term, but you know, just because blonde doesn't mean you know not intelligent. Uh, it's just a statement of fact. I'm sure we could come up with uh, another B word or two that's more derogatory than blonde, but we're not going to go. There. Oh my gosh, I don't can't believe why you went there to start with. But anyway, uh, enough about me. Let's uh, let's hear from Josh. Yeah, I am Josh. You guys know me as NW99XJ or Northwest99XJ over at xjtalk.com. I'm all over the web on various other forums and Jeep sites as well. i uh, got my build thread up there. You guys can check out my rock crawling 1999 Jeep Cherokee on, well, pretty much just all over the web. The only man to get a speeding ticket while rock, rock crawling. <laughs> That's pretty bad. <laughs> you should check out some of those videos, Tammy. He goes fast over those rocks. Yeah, kind of hard to understand how he gets damaged. <laughs> have no idea how the carnage happens. Yes. And our newest co-host and blonde, uh, Tammy. Yep. Um, you know me as Jeep Mama. I have a blog at www.jeepmama.com. And of course, I'm all over all the other social media sites. Oh, yeah. We do a lot of the social media. Josh uh, shuns that like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, more than I should. Like, like Poland did try to do Hitler. So, uh, it does get quite addicting, though. It kind of takes over your life. Sometimes. Well, it's it's fun interacting with people, and and it is. Uh, I don't need another hobby. It's <laughs> it's like you know, back when you were in high school, somebody could always look at you funny or say something about your platform shoes or your super wide bell bottoms, and uh, you know, you'd feel awkward about that. That does everybody can relate to that, right? Are you yeah. staring at my pocket protector, sir? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, but social media is great because if somebody makes fun of you, you can just you know 
go downstairs and eat a donut and come back and, and respond. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a lot different. It's like a, a safe uh, social environment. So I think that's the, the reason why uh, uh, people uh, gravitate, gravitate to that so much. Gravitate. Hey, yes. I love it. Completely. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, did you know Curly died of a stroke in his uh, like mid to late forties? Wow, ah. too young, too and, young. Yeah, and uh, several of the Stooges had strokes but survived. But uh, Curly well, had uh, all that knock on the noggins, uh, all it, that all I, the hits to the head. I guess so. And uh, Mo was like, uh, oh gee, what uh, five foot two? Was really was really surprised. I mean, they did look short. <clears throat> in the shows, but uh, I wonder if any of them owned a Jeep. Gosh, I guess they could have. They would have gotten <laughs> one of the first, very first a, ones, yeah, wouldn't they? That would have been cool. Yeah, uh, especially if there was video of that. So last week we weren't here. Yeah, we we you have some splaining we were, to do. We were here, but we were just twiddling our thumbs because there was no internet. At least none here at the uh, Jeep Talk Show Studios or XJ Talk Studios, depending on. Uh, what name you want to go uh, go with since we're transitioning, and uh, so the the basically the internet went out right after Josh and I finished the Tony and Josh show. We didn't even get yeah. to record our little promo, and it just it no. Went- in fact, in fact, as I counted down at to be the, for the countdown to begin the timer for our for our promo that night, it was three, two, one, <laughs> and then all of a sudden Tony's internet connection completely drops away from my screen. It was like somebody had severed the connection, and essentially. <laughs> That's what exactly what happened. Yeah, over 24 hours later, when the internet did come back up, uh, Josh's uh, comment on I saw Josh's comment on Skype. He says, "Did you lose power?" <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish. <laughs> no, no, because that has happened before. But uh, but yeah, it just kind of goes back to what Tony was saying a little bit ago about we are just some well non professionals, yeah. but we are all Jeep enthusiasts, and we all have uh, well something to say about it. So uh, after the uh, the internet was down for for quite some time, uh, I, uh, I I think I woke up around five o'clock in the morning and uh, was worried about it because I knew about the show the next day and I got up here to come mm-hmm. check it and I, I felt for sure it was going to be back up and running. Nope, wasn't up and running. Ooh. So so I uh, I uh, looked up the number and I actually had to call uh, AT and T on my cell phone because uh, I have phone, video, and internet all through AT and T. So, uh, I, like I said, like I was saying, I called up AT and T, got them on the phone. <laughs> Explained my problem, and that they <laughs> sounds about right. Yeah, and they said, "Oh, we need to send out a technician." <laughs> Sound like there was a football involved back there. <laughs> and I said, "Why? <laughs> There's nothing wrong yeah. with this stuff." Fix your Just stuff. Turn it back on. Yeah, fix your stuff on your <laughs> All side. All my lights are green and blinking. Come on. Ah, <laughs> oh, gee. So I had to wait for a technician to come out, and uh, they your could, service it, window, sir, will be sometime between eleven a.m. and seven p.m. Well, they all the morning. Now get this: all the morning uh, appointments were taken, so they had to give me an afternoon Shocking. one. Shocking. So between four and eight p.m., and uh, they actually showed up around three or so. So uh, the technician came in and uh, took a look. <laughs> Another football. <laughs> Replaced the, uh, the residential gateway, the, the modem, if you will, and okay. uh, was, was, con- was confused as to why that didn't fix it. So they deleted my Get account. Be plugged in. They deleted my entire account and then, oh, um, nice and then re-added the, the account. Oh, hey, you're back. And it came up. So it wasn't something here now it you possibly were could be you were blackballed <laughs> somebody is is out to get you and they they removed the uh they they put a a, a a hex on your account in the system well let's see this should help <laughs> <laughs> so anyway that's why we were gone we were down for over 24 hours at least the, here at the studios we were and uh, just keep in mind it could happen to uh, tammy josh uh me or you guys trying to watch the show. So it's, yeah. it's, it's that's just the nature of the internet. Uh, the internet goes on, but parts of it may not. So that's what happened to us. And uh, unfortunately, that's just the, the way it is. So we apologize for any withdrawals or twitchy naps <laughs> that you may have had or incurred by your loss of the XJ Talk Show one day, yep. one week. So I want to tell you guys about the 4x4 Radio Network. The uh, 4x4 Radio Network is a... Uh, uh, 
A cabal? A, a <laughs> c- accumulation. A, a, cabal, a, is not, a cabal doesn't sound good. I have no idea what a cabal is. It's a, it's yeah, kind of a Middle like, Eastern a thing. It's a... Uh, uh, Population. <laughs> Population? But uh, so oh. anyway, it's a, it's a group of off-road shows that consists of uh, the XG Talk Show, uh, the 4x4 podcast. Of course, Dan is uh, currently traveling family uh, in tow. I'm so jealous of him. Yeah, in tow mm-hmm. all across the United States, all heading up to Alaska. Uh, the Center Steer podcast, which uh, they do all the, uh, uh, I want to say Jeep Wranglers. What do they do? It's uh, the Land Rovers. And right. uh, the Muddy Microphone podcast, and they uh, go through all the ATV, UTV, and uh, motorcycle off-roading stuff. So, boy, we got a little something for every, everybody. And all you have to do is go to 4 by 4 radionetworkcom and you can see all those shows, links to all those shows, and you can even listen to the shows. And In fact, if you've got about uh, three weeks to kill, you can hit the play button and just sit there and listen show after show after show, just like a radio station. And, oh, hey. That's why it's called the 4x4 Radio Network. Love that. 4x4, 4x4radionetwork.com. Yes, yes. So speaking of um, the uh, the off-road, uh, the 4x4 podcast, uh, Dan reached out to me, says, hey, I'm going to be in your neck of the woods here pretty soon. And uh, he's he's driving into the Northwest. Uh, he's going to be actually to uh, heading out to uh, some sort of overland rally. Uh, and I don't know if it was this last weekend as we're recording this or this coming weekend that we're recording this, but uh, it's several hours away from me nonetheless, but uh, he is going to be out here in the Northwest. So uh, Dan, if you are listening and you are around, well, man, safe travels and hope you're having a good time. I think he's doing think, good. Yeah, I think I saw today, um, I don't know if it was on Instagram or one of them, he's driving through Oregon right now. Oh. I mean, unless he put that, you know, recorded that earlier and, you know, just put it up today. <laughs> and he didn't call. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, before we get away too far from this, uh, Josh, you're a sick boy tonight, aren't you? Yeah, a little bit. I, uh, I'm not necessarily sick, but I'm uh, recovering, uh, as it were. I had, some, uh, I had some dental procedures done. Well, just, uh, I was a cheap SOB. And I went to a free dental clinic because uh, I hate spending money on mm-hmm. on things like dental work. And uh, and you know I've, I go to the dentist every now and again, but when they say, "Oh, you need this, that, and the other thing," I'm just like, "Well, yeah, they feel fine. I'll take care of it next time." <laughs> just trying well, to get so money out of my pocket. I know you. Guys. I knew I needed a couple <laughs> of uh, of fillings, and so I went to this free dental clinic, and it was uh, at, at some church in a in a neighboring town, and and so I went over there and. Uh, Church? And had to a couple of fillings. Yeah, they, they set they set up this clinic in a, in a church, and uh, they do medical on one side and dental on the other, and and it's all um uh you know for free. And so I was like, all right, I'll, I'll participate. Why not? And uh, so I had a couple of fillings done. Well, apparently the tools were not clean enough or something. <laughs> I don't know. I no got an way. infection, and uh, one I got an abscess above one of my teeth. Um, and, and what a pat, what happened was he apparently had broke the barrier between, um, the nerve and the pulp of the tooth and got some bacteria in there and the infection spread quite quickly because he then, uh, closed it all up with filling material, including putting some of that filling material on the nerve. So I was in, in a a (laughs) severe amount of pain for, for several days. Um, and it got, it got so bad. I had to leave work one day. Um, this was uh, a couple days ago and I, I, I went to the, the closest dentist that I could find and was <laughs> Broke like, in. You, you need to do something. <laughs> I'm about ready to take a set of channel locks to my teeth and just yank this one out because it's driving me effing nuts. And, uh, and I, you know, I was in, I really, I mean, my eye wouldn't stop watering. My face was starting to swell up on the one side. It was bad news. And, uh, so they took a couple of x-rays and that's when I found out that the guy had gone too deep and what he had done. And what subsequently I needed to have done in order to save both my tooth and part of my jaw. And that was a root canal at post haste. But they needed to get some antibiotics in me first for a little while uh, because of the infection. Uh, good times, right? So went in today for my root canal and, uh, and that was no bueno. Uh, so, if anybody's had one, they, they are not any fun. I hate the dentist to begin with. Um, and when they start going with that drill and everything else, and he nicked my nerve a couple of good times after that stuff had worn <laughs> off, and ooh, 
I tell you what, man, that that smarts like nobody's business. But uh, yeah, so I'm recovering now. Um, I'm on a lot of pain meds. So um, if uh, I was stumbling a little bit in the beginning of the show, well, you guys know uh, know why. But I'm a little warm, more warmed up now. Well, we're glad you're here, and that uh, it was a questionable for for Josh being here. So uh, we're really uh, glad that you could uh, could join us. So uh, let's get over to our first quick Jeep tip. This is Steve, 4.3 LXJ, with a quick Jeep tip. Next time you change your sensors out, like your crank position sensor, before it goes bad, put that sensor in something to keep it safe and carry it with you on the trail. It never hurts to have things like crank position sensors and cam position sensors and coolant temperature sensors with you in case the ones that you have go bonkers on you. It can make the difference between a short wheeling day and a nice wheeling day. You know, I, I know that the, the TJ uh, Wrangler mm-hmm. has a, 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 a crank position sensor, but I don't know if the newer JKs do. I would assume they do. They, they have to have something for the computer to read off of, but I don't know how they do it. I was just going to ask. I have no idea what he's talking about. The the computer has to know the position of uh, uh, the, uh, the the crank, crank shaft. the crankshaft so it'll know when to fire the uh, the spark plugs uh, right. in the proper order and the, at the right time. So if that sensor goes bad, the computer says, "Ain't you ain't running?" Because then you could potentially cause issues and yeah, fires and death and, and explosions that, yeah. and, uh, and and the head will blow off, jump through be? the hood. Uh, the, this sensor, the crank position sensor, is located on the bell housing. Uh, towards the back of the engine. So what it actually does is as the flywheel goes around, there's a little big knobby piece of metal welded to it. And there's the, the crank position sensor is basically a magnet. And when it sees, uh, when it, uh, I say sees, when it senses that big hunk of metal pass through its magnetic field, it sends a, a electrical pulse to the computer saying, I saw it. So then uh, the computer knows that's where the position of the crank is. But it's it's like on the back of the bell housing, which makes it, all kinds of fun to get to, unless you have a lifted oh, yeah. Jeep, and then when it's and lifted, it's a little bit easier. Yeah, it's then. a little bit you easier. Still, you still need about three and a half feet of uh, socket <laughs> extension, a wobbly yes. bit, and a double jointed elbow. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, or a triple A card and call a tow truck. <laughs> oh, I guarantee uh, well. you that somebody would uh, take a bullet before they would do a CPS change on the side of the road. I mean, for mm. you know, like a triple A person, it's really oh, not yeah. that bad. The, the hard part is keeping the bolt in the socket as you're balancing it over those three and a half feet to hit in the hole. So you, uh, well, no, I'm not going to make that. I'm not going to make that joke. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, Moving right along. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll just say you have to have experience. So let's see, let's go over to our voicemails and, uh, boy, Josh, we still need to get a, uh, a, a voicemail promo with uh, Tammy in it. Oh yeah. Hey, this is Tony. And this is Josh from the XJ Talk Show. And we want to thank you for calling our 24-7 voice line. Yes, we do. Just leave your first name and your question or comment. There's no guarantee, but we may play your message on the podcast. Oh, and don't worry about keeping it clean. We'll take care of that. Now it's your turn to speak at the beep. Hey, guys. This is a super talk. Tonight, I am enjoying being eaten by... Minnesota's state bird, mosquito. You know why we we uh, tie up and and chain up pets in Minnesota, oh, no. especially towards the after dark times. It's not really that we're worried about them getting loose in the small towns or whatever. It's because if they don't, the state bird, the mosquito, will come out and take them away. (laughs) So that is why we always make sure to have them on a leash or a chain or or something like that. Otherwise, you may not find them in the morning or they'll be floating and there because of state birds. So, yeah, trying to, to... to work with the state bird is not fun. Wow. Uh, I don't know. That sounds like, uh, yeah, you could do some uh, shotgun shooting for those state birds, I think, mm-hmm. if they're that big. You know, just sit there on the porch in a nice mosquito screen and a uh, little opening for the uh, double barrel. Anyway, let's get to our next one. 
Greetings and octogenarians. XJ Talk. This is Super Croc again. You know what I dislike? Mixing coolant or antifreeze. Whichever are you southerners and call it. It's generally coolant up here because, oh, about, except for maybe two weeks out of the year, it's used as coolant. But that's our topic. But yeah, you can get it 50-50 pre-mixed, but then you're paying out the the third point of contact for it, and that's never fun. But you get it full strength, and you have to mix it, and you spill water all over, you spill coolant all over, it gets all over, and it's no fun. This week, I had to do that three times. Twice for my car, before and after changing a water pump, which I had replaced a couple months ago, but either the pump itself or the gasket failed, not sure. But I got a replacement pump and gasket, so. And then for a friend's car. So, yeah, coolant. I hate it. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so there's some. Yeah, no, that's, that stuff is uh, is no fun, but it tastes great. Oh yeah, the the, the dogs and cats love it. So uh, there's some conversation in the chat room about these being repeats, and I was just just commenting if if they're bold, it means that they haven't been uh, uh, played uh, from where I get them in our uh, speak pipe or our uh, voicemail system. So they were, I got them. So you know, if you can't have uh, Super Croc once, have it twice, right? Greetings and randomizations, XJ Talk. This is the Super Croc coming to you from my garage slash shop where I do all my well, 90, well, 75% of my work on my Jeep. But this call is not Jeep related at all. For those of you who don't are either reading or are watching the Game of Thrones series and not caught up, you might want to plug your ears for the next 30 seconds or so. Oh, no. Last week was a series finale. And then we found out that that Daenerys had the ring and was <laughs> trying to get get it to to Frodo and Dumbledore on their way to <laughs> to the the Mount of Candy Gum Worms. We found out that the wall is actually inhabited entirely by jelly monsters, and we found out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you believe that one? I was shocked too. Now, with both of us books and show watchers left in the dark, we are on what's coming up next. Well, oh, G.R.R.M. Martin, or the author, would want us to finish on, Well, HBO will take control and, and make it a musical, or will. <laughs> Sauron finally get the ring. Bye! <laughs> so Tammy bought into that. She was at her fingers in her ears. She didn't want to hear it. No, there was no spoilers. It was... No, it, it I didn't was, listen to anything. It was, I haven't caught it, up on Game of Thrones yet. It was 10 minutes of random thoughts. <laughs> and I missed them. <laughs> That's all right. We'll play it again next you'll week. You'll catch it on the best of. We'll play of it the, again next week. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. <laughs> all right. One more. Hey, guys. This is the Super Croc. First off, Tony, you know, if you needed an a night off because you said, yeah, I'm not going to make it next week <laughs> and there will be no podcast instead of getting it, uh, people getting hyped up for it and then, oh, cancel due to network issues. <laughs> network issues, whatever. <laughs> that the network between your, your rear end and the chair. <laughs> I guess those are important. But. And now, you know, my spoilers won't be very good, so I'll just have to spoil what happens in the the 
show coming out this next year that legally I can't talk about, but it's <laughs> involving a series of three true movies and three three movies um, that were supposedly sequels but aren't actually sequels, and so it's it's set in the future, and so we'll call them Earth Invader is talking with his new protege, protege the um, Daffy Duck, we'll call him, and then things happen, and it'll be good. Can't spoil it much more than that. Yep. Time to wrestle a transfer case some more. Bye! <laughs> well, that was special. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Uh, but thanks to everybody that uh, decides to call in because uh, I know a lot of people don't like hearing their own voice and uh, some of us don't mind. <laughs> All right, so uh, you guys are well aware of this, uh, although you took a week off, so you may have forgotten. We're changing the name of our show. Josh, why are we doing this? It's, it just well, seems like we show suicide. No. <laughs> no, it's actually got nothing to do with that, guys. We uh, well, we've uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes with uh, bring on a new uh, co-host. Uh, of course, the four x four radio network becoming part of that as well. There's a lot of changes happening, and well, the uh, the XJ Talk Show is just not going to be able to keep up with it. So, in order to keep the podcast and keep up with the changing times, well, we're just going to change the name. Now, none of the format is going to change. People, all the segments that you guys have grown to know and love or hate and despise, whichever you may want to fill in the blank there with, uh, are all going to stay the same. We're not going to change anything. We are going to be adding some other stuff as the weeks and months go on, but uh, but overall, the show is not going to change. Just a slight little name change. Let's say we're uh, going under um, protective custody or something. Yeah, look, at, look at it like you're uh, going to register at a hotel under an assumed name. That's what uh, we're doing because yeah, that would be fun times usually when you're doing that. You're either a hitman mm-hmm. or you're in, a, in the middle of an affair. So uh, let's, let's go with the last one. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And, you know, speaking of which, I was actually going to jump in here and uh, tell you guys about a, a couple of new segments we have coming up. Uh, that uh, that you people out there in the world, just like Tammy, just like Josh did, have uh, taken the uh, the open seat that we always have available for anyone that wants to be a part of this show. We we are going to be bringing in a Grand Cherokee segment. Yay! Come on, everybody! Yay. Where's the fanfare? <laughs> the drum roll! And then uh, you know this is pretty exciting. Um, this is a, a segment we're going to be doing about CJs, so the the Jeep to end all Jeeps, which of course didn't happen, but uh, the the old CJ, the ones that came out right after. Uh, oh, there was a cat there, uh, Josh. Yeah, he's uh, being persistent. <laughs> so you close that door, and then uh, I bet you I, I have a know, kitty door, don't you? I didn't know he was in here. <laughs> <laughs> He was hi- he was hiding behind a speaker or something. Oh, that's so cute! You're not choking him all right now, are you? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> so anyway, we've got a CJ segment coming up. We've got a Grand Cherokee segment coming up, and uh, that's another reason why we're changing the name of the show because it's going to be all things Jeep. Because uh, you know Jeeps are fun; they're great. I mean, maybe not so much the new ones, but hey, if you want to go in and do a uh, a segment about the Renegade or the uh, the new Trail Chick. No, Hawk. The new Trail Talk Cherokee. I know it's hard to say. It doesn't. It doesn't want to come out of the mouth. I. I, I know. Well, it does, but it wants to come out suddenly and violently. <laughs> with, with extreme I'm sorry. prejudice. I'm sorry. We're trying. We're trying to be nice to Jeeps, and I keep forgetting about it because I'm just not really enthusiastic about the new Jeeps. But maybe we can get somebody in on the show that is, and uh, they can share that uh, that fun and excitement with you. So, mm-hmm. uh, XJ Talk Show becoming the jeep talk show and uh don't don't fear it embrace it it'll all be okay it'll be better better than before now really quick tony to uh to set some people's minds at ease how is this going to affect as far as like their subscriptions go they're subscribed to the xj talk show and and we change it uh when we change it how is are they are they still going to get their notifications are they still going to be able to get their show no sadly not 
Well, <laughs> they'll never hear from us again. Boy, there is some kitty love going on there. Yeah, oh, he's so <laughs> he is very much wanting to be a part of the show. <laughs> oh, he wants to be. He wants to get inside you. That's what he wants to do. He's he's <laughs> very happy with you. I can tell. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's cool whenever uh, you have a cat that's that affectionate. They they usually don't really care. Um, but uh, getting that tuna smell in your face is another thing. <laughs> hey, let's <laughs> let's get over to our. But uh, first, you nobody's going to miss out on their membership or they're seeing the show. You just well, see, everything will be. See, the I same. was getting away from that because I don't know. <laughs> from what I read, it shouldn't. But we're going to find out. Yeah, this is this is actually has never been done before, people. We are we're, we're treading new waters here. So, um, yeah, this is going to be real interesting. And you guys are all going to be our guinea pigs. How special. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a reason why I didn't want to change it. But, uh, damn it, we're <laughs> going to do it. And uh, it should be all okay. If it's not, we'll give you detailed instructions of where you should uh, <laughs> flee and hide that so that you will not be affected. But now... Some YouTube love. Oh, yeah. We gotta love that YouTube love. Got Every it. week we pull a few names out of the hat for, to be exact, in no particular order whatsoever. These are just out of our recent subscribers. And uh, some of these are, well, not as recent as you'd think. <laughs> uh, we have some familiar names on the list this week. But, uh, Tony, who do we got up first? Well, we have Matt Tabor. And I've got uh, Amernad. And 11B underscore AK. I wonder if that's uh, AK for Alaska. Ooh, good one. And here's our familiar name, somebody who I think has even been on part of the show, Paddle Trucker. Yeah, he actually, uh, I released a past show that he was on, and we had the great Blackhawk interview with him. the Black Helicopters. Yeah, they were chasing him. That was a great interview. Yeah, that was uh, actually last episode. We put that out instead of, uh, of the show since we were down. Anyway, uh, please join us over at youtube.com slash xjtalk. Now the favorite part of the show. My favorite <laughs> part of the show. <laughs> I'm kind of I'm kind of partial to the Wrangler talk part, but okay. Well, the- From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G. And uh, just got the podcast and I hate to do it, but I got to fuss at you a little bit, Tammy. Uh, you got me in some trouble. Uh, let me explain. Uh, I was in uh, the Mickey G secret lair. It's a night of repeats. Which uh, everybody else calls the den. So I was in there uh, doing paperwork, which is code for playing large amounts of Candy Crush. <laughs> and I had the uh, XJ talk going on in the background. And it's a segment and you're complaining about some guy probably in New York City who's never even owned a Jeep complaining about your Jeep and you got to the park where you said you like to take your top off and drive down the highway and at that moment my wife Wendy walks in (laughs) and uh, our conversation I won't get into it but it sounded a lot like Jake from State Farm commercial (laughs) Uh, so long story short she told me I'm sick I need help and uh, she swears I was listening to the audio book of Fifty Shades of Grey. All right, so uh, where can I send my uh, marriage counseling bill to? <laughs> and I will chat at you guys later. You have a good one. You like. Well, that's a shame. We knew Tammy was going to be trouble when she joined the show, though. Yeah. That's me, the troublemaker. And, yeah. <laughs> okay, one more. Hey, this is Nikki G, and I just want to let Tammy know that the difference between the Cherokee and the Grand Cherokee is the Grand Cherokee is a little bit bigger. Yeah, they had to do that to incorporate the cup holders because the <laughs> Cherokee has no freaking <laughs> cup holders. And the reason why Josh hasn't been wheeling too much is uh, because he enjoys tooling around in that Honda. It's a sweet ride. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, right, oh. boys and girls. Uh, I'll chat at you later. Low blow. And remember, if everything's coming your way, you're probably driving in the wrong lane. <laughs> All right, I'll see ya. And then you. Yeah, bye. <laughs> the beds of helping Josh get these jokes. Uh, yeah, a little bit maybe, but nonetheless, 
No, I, I did make a call for action a couple weeks ago for you guys to uh, call in and give me some grief and uh, take me to task about not working on my Cherokee or wheeling it oh, much yeah. lately. So, um, but uh, that has been resolved. Um, and no thanks to Nikki G uh, with a little <laughs> blow below the belt there. Yeah, thanks, pal. <laughs> well, and you drive a Honda, you got to aim low. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this is Nikki G. And uh, just want to apologize for the internet outage uh, last week. Oh, that's right. I just figured uh, if you could put Man on the Moon. Why can't you put metal in a microwave? <laughs> now we know why. I'll chat to you guys later. Probably yeah, heating his mind. tinfoil hat. The, the letters match up, you know? Man on the yeah. moon, metal in the microwave. It makes sense to me. It, it makes sense, <laughs> right? There's logic there. This has been from the mind of Nikki G. Uh, you got to love Nikki G. And uh, contract, contractually, we are obligated to, uh, to love Nikki G. You're listening to a 4x4 four by four, four by four Radio Network podcast. Well, I'm not sure if we've read this review uh, or not, but this is a night of repeats. Uh, that's what happens when you get out of uh, the practice of doing the show for one week, but I'm going to read this one anyway. Uh, it's a Jeep Rocking Good Time by Jeepin CJ5. This is way back on June 2nd of 2015. It was a five-star review. Of course. And uh, he says, uh, love listening to these guys. Tammy, that includes you. Uh, full of information and entertainment as well. Keep up the good work, uh, Jeep, Jeepin' CJ5. So thank you very much for that five-star yeah. review. And you guys need to go over to the iTunes. Uh, that's kind of like the Twitter, but it's the iTunes. And uh, give us a five-star review and uh, let us know what you like about the show. And don't forget to mention Tammy's name. There you go. <laughs> Oh. We got a new segment. We got a new segment coming up for you guys. We've been uh, trying to do this here in the last couple of weeks, and it's uh, turned out to be pretty popular. Mm -hmm. What's happening on xjtalk.com? What is happening indeed? Well, a lot of stuff every single day, and it's usually a lot of good advice, some great picks, wheeling picks, even some videos here and there and stuff, and well, a lot of other great stuff as well. We pick uh, one particular post or thread out of the massive amount that get uh, that get posted on the internet yeah. each and every day. And uh, one we pick out every week to, to highlight on the show. And uh, Tony, what do we got this week? Well, this is kind of an old post, but uh, I think it's a good one. And it was recently revived. And I don't know, you may see on other sites where uh, people will say, gee, this was, uh, you know, it went all the way back to the Nixon administration yeah. and make a new post. And I never understood that. I mean, you've got the information yeah, if there. If it's valid, yeah. yeah. It, if it was valid in the 60s, it's still valid today, right? So somebody rejuvenated this old post because they had read about uh, their uh, uh this door fix. And in fact, the, the post is called damn door hinge fix. Uh -huh. and, <laughs> and this was posted some time ago by XJ four IV. Uh, and he writes, uh, okay. So after a few weeks of my driver's door getting worse and worse today, uh, was the breaking point almost literally. Uh -huh. So I had contemplated several ways on how to fix this thing. During my research, I found that Chrysler issued a recall up to 100,000 miles for the issue. However, it did not include my year model for some reason. Well, that, that, that's, that's Murphy's Law for you. Uh, anyhow, enough babbling here. Here's my list of materials. And Scott goes into the details of all the things that he needed to do his door hinge fix. Oh, very good. I like those kind of posts when they when they list out you're gonna need a 14 millimeter deep, you're gonna need mm -hmm. a 13 millimeter shadow, shallow, you know, you're gonna need a screwdriver, this, that, and the other thing. And and it's it's great. I've got all my stuff here. I don't no more back and forth you know, to the toolbox and stuff like so that. Much time. That's uh, yeah. you know, that's taking uh, a good detailed post to the extreme. I love that. And and this particular fix did not require a henway. So, uh, a Cantab 27 down in, uh, New Zealand says, cheers for that. Have to pick, fix one of my doors soon. And, uh, I think this is so old. This is back when Cantab had a, uh, a, a Cherokee. He's, he's no. now beat the hell out of a TJ yeah. for, for a year or so. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, this, this goes to show you that you can find all kinds of things on xjtalk.com and then you can you can find this stuff on other forums too uh i know that there there's older forums out there that have a lot more detailed information but when you ask a question on xjtalk.com you're going to get an answer you're not going to get flamed you're not going to be told why did you rejuvenate this post from so long ago post something new go someplace else use google it's your friend 
Uh, none of those things you're going to hear on this site, and you should feel comfortable about coming there and reading and posting your questions because everybody has one. Absolutely. And, and stuff like this, too, where, where it's just somebody posting up how they did something, how they fixed a common problem or an issue that popped up on their Cherokee. And, and it's just out there for you guys to be able to use. Hopefully somebody down the road at some point later on down the future will be able to gain uh, a little bit out of this information. Yeah, right just, just like this post was. Tammy, I'm sorry, you, you and Josh were fighting there for microphone oh. superiority. No, I was just going to say I hate when people... Um, tell you to go to Google. Mm, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can find a lot of things on Google and you may see on xjtalk.com the actual search that somebody did to find the information. Not because we're telling you to search on your own, because some people don't know how to search. So, you know, if, if I have to go do a search to get an answer for somebody, I'm happy to do it. Uh, and I'll, I'll actually put in there what I did, what kind of search I did. That may help them find the information and quite often I'll be searching for something on Google and it'll, I'll, I'll say, Oh, there's an answer and it's yeah. on xgtalk.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's really weird. I'm like, Oh wow. Look at that. Well, there are more replies available on this post as well. Just go over mm -hmm. to xjtalk.com and look for damn door hinge fix with a question mark <laughs> and feel free to share your thoughts with uh, xj4 IV on, uh, on this thread here. If you've got a door fix issue and, Maybe be able to shed some light on this for somebody else in the future. Well, by all means, head over to xjtalk.com and, man, well, add your two cents. Absolutely. Or five bucks. Whatever you got. <laughs> shut up and listen. Shut up. So shut up. You don't shut up. Man, shut up, Shane. Hey. <laughs> shut up and listen. It's time for Wrangler Talk. It's time for G-Mama. Okay, so Tony and Josh, you know, I always like to be prepared. I guess it's the the Boy Scout mom and me, um, especially when I'm in my Wrangler, when I'm out hitting those trails. Um, careless driving can be very costly. So I decided my next couple of blog posts on my blog at www.jeepmama.com will be a series of off-roading tips. One part of being prepared is to know what to do in situations and what to avoid. And you know the Jeep slogan is go anywhere, do anything. Well, that go anywhere part can be in the sand, the water, the mud, the rocks. And I'm sure I'm missing some others as well. But as you know, I'm not that experienced yet in the world of off-roading. I'm still new and learning every day on the trails. So my first Be Prepared blog yesterday was tips for off-roading water obstacles. My experience driving in the water is very limited. There's a few trails at Roush Creek where the rainwater or the melting snow has filled in um, some of the low-lying areas. So I'm going to share, I shared a few of my tips that I learned on my blog, and I know there's so much more for me to learn, so I asked fellow Jeepers to chime in with their tips. So here's the things that I learned. First of all, when I roll through the water, I go really slow because I don't know what could be hidden under the water, there's rocks and holes in the path. And if you go to my YouTube channel, the Jeep Mama channel, um, there's a video there where I did bang into one of the hidden rocks right on my shock. Um, I will watch the vehicle in front of me go through the water first very carefully to see what things I might be in my way. Um, and how deep you should go it depends on the vehicle. Each vehicle is different. I tend to err on the side of caution, and I try not to go higher than my bumper. This water can be very, very damaging to your engine, transmission, electronics, differentials, and so on. And like with any type of off-roading, you should never go alone. You might need to, someone to pull you out of the water. And a fellow Jeeper suggested have the bigger, higher Jeep go first so they could pull you out if need be. And once you're out of the water, be careful of your brakes. Use them lightly until you dry them out. So the tips that I got from the fellow Jeepers, um, one guy lost a bunch of his electronics and he did some research afterwards and he found this thing called conformal coating and there's a link to it on my blog and it helps protect your circuit boards against water and moisture. Another Jeeper suggested going fast enough to create a wave in front of your vehicle but not too fast. Um, if you're crossing a river, do it downstream and do it diagonally. If your engine drowns, gets water sucked into it, never start it again unless you've taken out the spark plugs and purged the water inside the cylinders. 
Um, somebody else suggested that, that you check your snorkel before you go out because of nesting birds. And to keep the intake out of the water, keep your engine running, and send your sister out on the hood to let the winch out when you get hung up if needed. <laughs> but there keep you go. Jeep running. Um, I, my sisters are too far away for me to do that. Um, so I guess my husband will just have to do that. Something to add for the TJs with automatics, the breather hole, I don't know if this is correct. You guys might be able to tell me this, but he says the breather hole for the transmission is about two-thirds the way down the bell housing, so that needs to be addressed if you want to go into deeper water. And finally, all vents need to be extended. This person extended their tranny and axle vents. Um, it's no faster way to ruin the tranny and axle seals and bearings than putting water into them. So I'm going to be working on more water obstacle tips. I'll add them to my blog if you guys send them in. And other types of off-roading, I would love to hear from you. So if you have any off-roading chips to share for the water, mud, sand, rocks, you can post a comment on my blog at www.jeepmama.com. And on the right-hand side of my blog is a contact me form. So I'd love to hear your tips on any one of those or any other type of off-roading that I have, might have missed. Yeah, excellent. I don't think you probably would have to worry about getting uh, water or mud into the uh, axles on your, your new Jeep, Tammy, since uh, you have all new seals, that should be enough to keep it out. Uh, but uh, yeah, getting into too deep of water in your automatic transmission can cause issues. But if you have a snorkel or if you, uh, if you just want to extend those lines up to, say, the engine cowl or, or up higher in the engine bay, then that will uh, give you a little... Uh, extra depth that you can go in the water. Personally, uh, I have a daily driver just like yours. Uh, the Jeep is a daily driver, and I don't want water inside the cab. So no, I still know, have carpeting. Yeah, two two thirds mm-hmm. of the way up a up the transmission is uh, plenty for me because I mean I can get uh, into two feet of water before it gets to the bottom of my Jeep. So if I'm going in deeper than two feet of water, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I've I know never really that. Um, I read like the Cherokees and the Wranglers, they're all different heights that can, you know, when they're stock. Oh yeah. You know, they're different heights. Yeah. It just depends. It it depends on how they were, how how they were designed and put together. But of course we change those things. We do those type of things. You know, I've never really been a big fan of, of deep water crossings. I, I, I get the attraction of it and I've seen some crazy YouTube videos of some just insane snorkeled vehicles Mm -hmm. doing basically just floating down the river. Yeah. And just the, the motion of the tires carrying them across enough to where they eventually made it to the other side. But nonetheless, yeah, that's not for me <laughs> or my Cherokee, <laughs> more specifically. Yeah, yeah the, uh, the great thing about a high water crossing is you can go, go to the bathroom without having to stop. Yeah, There you well. go. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I tend Number to one. just like to dip my toes in the water. That's uh, about it. Uh, that's, that's pretty good. You, and doing that from, the, from your Jeep is pretty cool as well. So, uh, uh, great uh, Wrangler Talk segment. Thank you very much, Tammy, and uh, we look forward to the next one. Yeah, hopefully people will be sending in some more tips because I'm not very, very experienced yet at a lot of the things. Yeah, help Tammy out, and uh, uh, you may hear your, your tip in uh, the next Wrangler Talk. So, let's get to our next Jeep tip. This is Steve, 4.3 LXJ, with a quick Jeep tip. When you go wheeling... Carry lots of cash with you. You just can't use credit cards on trees and rocks. Uh, You may be someplace where cash is the only acceptable thing that you can use. So cash always works. Plastic doesn't. I think think, uh, Steve's looking to roll somebody. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No, it's actually a great tip because you don't want to get out there and uh, hand the guy your credit card. Uh, or debit card for gas, and he says, uh, I'm sorry, son, I don't know what the hell that thing is. Well, hey, speaking of cash, uh, we've got a friend of the show who's certainly invested a pretty penny in his Jeep Cherokee, and it's by far one of the nicest XJ, XJs I have seen on the web. He's got a YouTube channel, and he's been a longtime friend of the show. His name is Dean Murray. Yeah, boy, talk about cash, and especially if you look at how much money you might get paid an hour and the amount of time that Dean has put into modifying his XJ. It's a it's a ninety nine XJ, by the way, Josh. And, yes, uh, I I know. <laughs> <laughs> and Dean and I spoke uh, at, extensively about uh, 
about his 99. Now, we did start off with getting to know Dean a little bit and where he's located. And well, uh, before we before we tease this too much and get into this too much, guys, I want you to understand just kind of how much of a big deal this is because it, Dean's Jeep really is very much sought after. He's got a lot of people making a lot of comments on his YouTube channel. Um, on especially like the walk around uh, that he does with this thing. It this is by all means, guys, a very beautiful Jeep. You've got to check this out. Dean has not agreed to do an interview with anybody else. He's turned a lot of people down to interview about his Jeep. He's agreed to do it with the XJ Talk Show. We have an exclusive cool. interview with Dean Murray. Yeah. Oh, and uh, I'm sorry. I said I'm excited to see it. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, we, I, I learned a lot about it. I thought I already knew a lot li watching his YouTube videos, but uh, well, let's listen to the uh, the little promo, and you can hear it uh, from Dean himself. Hey, this is Tony Motoroy from XJTalk.com, and I just got through doing a great interview with Dean Murray, and we talked about his highly modified Jeep Cherokee. It's a '99, and well, Dean, tell us what are we gonna hear on this interview. Tony, we're going to talk about everything from interior roll cages and armor and modified axles, more than you can possibly imagine. So stop on by and take a listen. Excellent. But you got to catch this interview right after the XJ Talk Show. So you guys should be ready for an interesting interview. It's nearly an hour. So you wow. should have. We did a lot of technical talk about his, uh, his Jeep. And uh, well, listen to the interview and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's a lot of fun. Good evening. You rang. <laughs> so I'm going to jump right into this. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the summer temperatures are here, and mm -hmm. uh, I am experiencing uh, a lot of heat, a lot of uh, coolant temps on my Jeep. I mean, I'm still seeing about the same thing on the uh, engine watchdog, that mechanical, uh, me mechanically connected temperature sensor to the thermostat housing. Uh, but you haven't gotten your your gauge dialed in yet, have you? I have not messed with that. Uh, I mean, since I have the uh, the engine watchdog and tells you what the temperature is, uh, I, I do have a way of seeing what it is, but uh, seeing what the actual temperature is. But it's still a bit unnerving uh, seeing that needle all the way over and the alarm oh, yeah, the bet. alarm light, you know, on on the dash yeah. saying, you know, danger will Will Robinson. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I keep looking every so often at the little. Uh, gauge that i've got sitting there a little lcd display and it says uh you know 217 220 221 something like that so uh you know and and also too it doesn't smell hot it doesn't drive hot you know how you lose performance uh yeah. no loss of performance everything's fine just the uh, the gauge is way off so uh, a little sad because uh, i was thinking you know okay i found the issue uh i can even drive someplace on uh to go off-roading uh, you yeah, know, an hour or so away, because now I know that everything's yeah. fine. But no. you know, two tw I, I need to go out and do a test and, and drive it a long time at, at 65, 70 miles an hour, and and see if it just stays at two twenty. Now there may be a lot of listeners out there that aren't familiar with the entire lineage of all the stuff that you've had to go through for for these these overheating issues that you've had over the over the many years. So the very first question that they're going to come up with is, have you replaced the coolant temperature sending unit? Yes, everything. And you still get the same the same the same uh, the same kind of uh, of display, which yeah. is very interesting. well. The the if I, I I did notice on one of the many changes of the uh, the temperature sensor. Uh, mm -hmm. that the, the original factory one was closer to accurate, or at least uh, lower. I don't know if it, how it measured up, because I would only had, recently had the engine watchdog thing. But I don't have that one anymore. I think that's up at Matt's shop. Now, here's something that I learned interesting going through my whole no-bus issue um, not all that long ago. It was that there was a slight, now, and I know you, this doesn't exactly apply to you, but it, it kind of falls into the realm of it. Now, there, there was a slight difference between the 98 and the 99 Jeep computers. For all intents and purposes, the 98 and the 99 Jeep Cherokee's engines are identical. Um, however, there was one subtle difference, at least that I know about firsthand, and that is the oil pressure sending unit. The wires in the PCU are reversed, I believe. So when my RPMs go up, I watch my oil pressure go down <laughs> because of I'm running a, I have a 98 computer in my 99 Jeep right now. And, That's and that, that, 
that one sensor wire in a different position on the on the computer or on the main harness is enough to alter the reading on the gauge. Now, Tony, I don't know if you are running into the same kind of issue where maybe you're getting the wrong kind of temperature sending unit, maybe the wrong year of sending unit, maybe one um, for a few years older or a few years newer or something like that would be uh, would give you more accurate readings. I don't know, just something I, I just now thought of. I put the uh, the digital voltmeter on it in the ohms measuring resistance, and uh, it is uh, not showing the proper resistance value for um, what? Uh, how can I put this? It is showing the right resistance value for the 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 temperature that it's that it's that the, that the computer's reading. So the, the the temperature sending unit, the sensor mm-hmm. itself, the resistance is wrong because the water temperature is uh, much lower, like 20 degrees lower than the resistance value that it's displaying. So yeah, I guess it, I guess it, I guess it could be, but uh, I uh, I don't know. It fits the hole. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it, was, it was funny because I was um, waiting at a red light the other day. And I know these are two different temperature things, but my temperature on the Jeep read it was 96 um, outside. And as I sat there for one minute, it went up five degrees just sitting there. Yeah. Well, you never can tell. Uh, that's kind of the bad thing about temperature sensors on hot metal vehicles. Uh, I, I don't know how they actually get that right, uh, honestly, because... Uh, you know, you got the, is the sensor inside a metal box and is it the sun on it? And, you know, you really need the, the, the temperature gauge sits hanging out there in the air because that's what you're going to notice. those things are, yeah, very accurate uh, at all. They, I mean, they're, they're best accurate when you're driving down the freeway. And, that's true. Uh, that's probably where they, uh, that's probably where they, uh, they adjust them for is so, yeah. so you know what the outside air temp is as you're driving on the road and looking at all the yeah. poor bastards that don't have AC. So I've been a poor bastard for a long time, neglecting my poor Jeep, and uh, I finally uh, got my ass in gear and did some work on it. Now, the last time I went wheeling, I uh, I broke a U joint and uh, and completely grenaded the ears on one of the uh, on one of the axle shafts. So that came out on the trail, and I basically limped around um, with uh, with no axle shaft in the in the Jeep. That's how I got home. And that's how um, uh, that's how the Jeep has been sitting since well, pretty much about November. Uh, and I've I haven't used the Jeep. I haven't wheeled it since. And I, I I've only taken it really around the block and a couple of short trips around the neighborhood. Um, and and that's really been about it ever since. So yes, the Jeep is is very much neglected. So the very first thing that I needed to do obviously was throw in my spare axle shaft into the passenger side of my high pinion Dana Thirty. And uh, as soon as I pulled off the, um, the wheel and I got the caliper off, I noticed that the, uh, that the rotor was, was, well, rather loose. And so when I grabbed it, it flopped around a lot more than it should have. Now, I've got a video that I took of my findings uh, of this, and it's up on, uh, up on YouTube uh, where you guys can see it. And um, the, the title to the, uh, to the video is Wheel Bearing a Little Loose. And you guys can see that it's uh, it's from uh, Josh B. As you guys will find it on YouTube. Now um, there was a good, I'm going to say, 400 to 500 thousandths of an inch of play. Well, that's about a half an inch of, of play uh, between the inside and the outside of that wheel bearing. It flopped around so much, I can't believe there's anything even holding it together. And that means there wasn't really anything holding that wheel on my Jeep either. So very, very scary. And the fact is, is I don't know how long it's been like that. Um, if it happened on the drive home, if it happened on the last drive that I, that I, uh, that I took it on, I don't know. In any case, um, it wasn't something that I was expecting. Uh, and so I had to run out to the parts store and go get a replacement wheel bearing, uh, unit hub, unit bearing or whatever, and, and swap that out. But uh, in my, in my um, perusing around the front end, I did notice another issue that I'm going to call unintentional pitman arm rotational shift yeah say that 10 times that fast. sounds complicated well what had happened was uh apparently i bumped into something a little too hard and my one ton over the knuckle steering uh did what it was supposed to do and not break or bend uh what did happen however was my pitman arm skipped a tooth or three on the uh on the oh, output shaft the selector God. shaft of the, of the steering box 
So, um, and I, and I, you know, it, it was funny because I noticed it too. The last few times I pulled, uh, you know, pulled the Jeep out of the garage and I'll drive it around the block or whatever that, you know, it, God, it, it doesn't turn left very easily. You know, I had one steering wheel rotation to the left and two full steering rotations to the right. And that's how much it was off. So I had to um, pull the, the, uh, the pitman arm uh, off of the uh, selector shaft of the, of the steering box and uh, reset to, to, to center on the steering wheel and then reattach, uh, re adjust and then reattach my, uh, my drag link with the, uh, with the pitman arm back onto the steering box. So yeah, um, uh, good times and a lot of surprises in the 99XJ. Amazing. Uh, that, you know, I mentioned earlier about the speeding ticket over the rocks, Tammy. Yeah, I was going to say, next time, are you going to be a little more careful? I don't no, know how not, this huh? stuff happens. No, I don't won't. know. You know, and it was funny. There's one other thing I noticed. There was a little bit of blood and hair right on my winch. I don't know where that might have came from, but <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You should never I'm abuse kidding. your winch. That's just uh, let her bring you beer and brats. And uh, <laughs> it's a see, it's a joke because winch and winch. But anyway, so uh, uh, speaking of uh, winch, no, um, uh, Tammy's grabbing her lever wrong. I'm sorry, I'm hearing you what? <laughs> <laughs> Tammy, what? Tammy, what's going on with your four low? Um, you know, I was going to get ready to go wheel in this weekend, but actually they've canceled it because it's supposed to be really crappy weather. And I just remember the last time I went out wheeling, I had a really hard time shifting it into four wheel low. So I thought, God, maybe I'm just doing something wrong. So I did a bunch of research, and I don't know how it works for you guys, but in my manual it says that I'm supposed to put it, you know, the automatic in neutral and then roll three to five miles per hour and then go from high to low. Yes. So I went and practiced um, today and um, it just, it was really, really stiff and hard and it, my Jeep made a bunch of weird noises and I got home and I'm like, oh my God, I think I broke my Jeep. And so I took my husband with me and we went out practicing in, in the school parking lot and he's like, you're not supposed to roll when you shift to four low. That's what I was going to say. Well, the, I said, uh-uh, it says it in the Jeep manual. And even on you know, all the research I've done, a lot of people roll. So as I was rolling, the gears started, you could just you yeah, know, hear the them grind. grinding. Yeah. And it, it went into, it went in, um, but they also grinded when I stopped. So I called a mechanic friend who also, he built his own rock crawler. He's going to come over in the morning and listen but I don't, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or if something's wrong with my transfer case. No, no, I think, I think it's, it's, it's from two-wheel drive to four high, you want to be in motion. But when yeah, you're I, switching into four low, you want to be at a stop with well, the transmission You have to be neutral. stopped, and you got to let the, the transfer case stop let spinning. The RPMs come it down. says yeah. in the manual from four high to four low, well, they probably three just, to five miles per hour. They uh -huh. probably just got a root canal, and they were all drugged up when yeah. they wrote that. So I'm I telling know. you, I'm going to have this mechanic guy first listen to see if I mess something up, and then I don't know. Well, obviously, I don't remember having these issues when I had my Sahara. Yeah, obviously, uh, the transfer case on yours may be different than the transfer case on ours, but I don't. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. betting they're not that different. If I want to go into four wheel low, and I've done so like two times out on the street, to seeing how to do it, because <laughs> I've never had to do it off road. Uh, but uh, I come to a complete stop, and if you start pulling that lever up into four wheel low, just because the engine was spinning and it was spinning the drivetrain, uh, the transfer case is still spinning. So it, it'll make that grinding noise, and if you if you wait just a second, it'll slow down, and and at least come to a stop if there's any synchronizer, synchronizers in there to allow you to 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 bring it into the four low. But it just takes just a, a second or two for it to stop spinning. And then you, it's real easy to pull it in and you've got it all the way back into the, in the gear. And now you just, you want to make sure you lean forward in case the, it does a, uh, a wheel stand because it, <laughs> it's really high geared at that, at that point. But yeah, I mean, uh, you can try coming to a complete stop if you haven't already tried that. Yeah, I've done, I've tried all of them. So when you're at a complete stop, you still have the same problem? Um, today I did. Interesting. Yeah, that's probably probably yeah, a good idea to have somebody look at it. it. It's like, and it's even like really super hard to get it back into to your drive. So I don't know. Just but I hear a lot of people you might, have this problem. You know, it's not a problem. It's just they're just. Very, well, you want to get it solved for you before you yeah. need it. 
Yeah, you might need a, a little, you know, lube on some joints or uh, a little adjustment of some linkage or something like that. Uh, you know, it's yeah. Somebody yeah. suggested a, um, an advanced adapter shift cable conversion. Oh. I haven't had a chance oh, to see what that I don't, yeah, no, I think I don't Novak think makes a makes one. Uh, yeah, advanced adapters. I mean, the big price tag with those. Yeah, but I yes, don't think you need you something will, to shift it in, in place. You so. don't need that. That is that is very that is a luxurious upgrade. Let's put it like that. Yeah, okay. I, I think you just need to find out why it's not working now. But anyway, uh, let's. Uh, wrap I mean, and this I up. did get it into four wheel low. It just was making not a very nice sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you don't want to get a lot of metal shavings in there. Uh, well, Josh, uh, let's uh, find out about Wheeling Wear. Yeah, who is and what is Wheeling Wear? Well, this is where we talk about what events are coming up in your neck of the woods and around the nation. Jeep Jamboree USA presents the ninth annual Killington, Vermont Jeep Jamboree. It's happening July 16th through July 18th. The Killington Grand Resort Hotel and Spa in Killington, Vermont will serve as the event headquarters and offer a relaxing and comfortable way to unwind after a full day of outdoor explanation, exploration and adventure. Yeah, you might have to do some explaining when you're uh, found in that hot tub later. JeepJamboreeUSA.com is where you go for more information. We Rock, we World Extreme Rock Crawling presents Dirt Riot Southeast, July 18th. Sturgis Motorplex in Sturgis, Kentucky. This is a spectator event, but with nothing rated under a five black diamond, this is an extreme event. WeRockLive.com for more information on this event. And Moab's Alpine Slick Rock 50 Mile Ultra 4 Race happening July 4th. If you guys don't have plans for the 4th of July, well, Moab, Utah is where you're going to want to be. First conceived in 2004, the MAS 50 is the event that brought the attention of Moab's trail running scene. Alpine Slick Rock says it all, folks. Where else can you see the cross three mountain passes at or above 11,000 feet and finish on beautiful Slick Rock terrain? MAS 50 is an ultra that will leave even the most seasoned runner wishing he had trained harder. Past runners have even referred to this race as Mini Hard Rock. If the gritty, physically challenged race is on your to-do list, then you will want to add the MAS 50 to your ultra calendar. For more information, head to grassrootsevents.net or call 719-429-9501. Don't forget, Jeep Junkies, whether you're at the park, in the woods, on the rocks, or even down on the beach, if you pack it in, pack it out. Remember to tread lightly. Let's leave our outdoors recreation spots in as good, if not better, condition than they were when we arrived. That's it for this week, guys. If you've got an event coming up in your area, let's get the word out. Whether it's a show and shine, a cruise in, a club run, or a fundraiser, or a huge event like Easter Jeep Safari, let us know by giving us a call or sending us an email to newstips at xjtalkshow.com. Hey, don't forget to uh, subscribe, rate, and review the XJ Talk Show, soon to be the Jeep Talk Show. You can go do so over at iTunes. You can do it at stitcher.com. And, uh, boy, you need we really need some uh, listeners and some uh, reviews at Stitcher.com. Uh, I don't know if you caught it or not, but, Dan, the 4x4 podcast was featured on Stitcher.com uh, recently and had a huge jump in downloads, and we'd like to see that, too. So please go over there and uh, give us a review on Stitcher. Call up Stitcher and demand that they do the same thing for us. <laughs> Yeah, indeed. <laughs> and of course, those iTunes five-star reviews and comments, guys, keep those coming. YouTube.com slash XJTalk. Make sure you guys are subscribing early and often. And make sure you guys are telling a friend about the XJ Talk Show, XJTalkShow.com. And of course, XJTalk.com, the world's most premier Jeep website. Oh, and you can find us on Facebook under our new name, a Jeep Talk Show. Just uh, look for us. Just do a search for Jeep Talk Show or The Jeep Talk Show on uh, Facebook and uh, friend uh, like our page uh, do whatever the hell you're supposed to do on Facebook I don't know Josh it's I'm, I can't keep up with it <laughs> well I certainly like. can't either and that's why I like don't us. guys Likes. we have a 24-7 voicemail line gotta give that line a call whether it's 3 o'clock in the morning and you've had too many to drink or it's well <laughs> right now do it 530-675-4102 we want to hear from you oh don't forget about Tammy you can find her over at uh, Jeep Mama her blog is great she always keeps up with a lot of information if you're new to jeeping uh, or even if you're an old timer you might want to go over there and uh, see how you're supposed to do it the right way right Tammy yeah my way is the right way of course <laughs> shut up and listen <laughs> to Jeep way. Mama <laughs> you guys have a great Jeep week have a good night